Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by Car Loop, Australian EV data and ownership trends, Cobra Car Insurance, Paper Kilometer, Warbox, EV charging solutions, and EV, hire electric vehicles from real owners. Hey everyone, welcome to today's BYD SEAL video. Today I'll be talking about the uh, center infotainment screen, the drive cluster screen or binnacle screen as well. So first of all, let's go through the center infotainment screen and the main screen looks something like this, where you have the three main controls, one for navigation, one for Spotify, and one for uh, the radio as well, a digital radio. You can also switch between the two like this. You've got more apps as well, um, depending on how many apps you have installed. Um, and you've also got the uh, last thing you played as well, uh, which is the digital radio. If you were to plug in your Apple CarPlay, and that would show up there as well. And this is for voice recognition, so you can press that, and then you can say whatever you want, um, and that will work. So we might do another uh, video on voice recognition uh, controls later on. Okay, thank you. Now I've disabled voice recognition, so you either have to press this on the screen, or press the microphone button on the steering wheel to activate voice control. Otherwise, it just gets too annoying. Uh, every time you say BYD, uh, that comes up. Okay, so uh, back on the center screen here, uh, you've got more information up in the top left corner here, such as time, and then you've got the 2.5 particular matter reading. Apparently it's five inside and 10 outside. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It seems to be always five and 10. I'll have to investigate that further. And then apart from the time in the center, you've got more information in the top right corner here, such as gradient, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location. Okay, so back here, then you've also got uh, some quick controls for air conditioning. So I've currently got the air conditioning off, but if you want to press that, you can activate the air conditioning settings. We might as well go through it right now. Um, buttons up here recirculating. That iron button, I'm still trying to work out what that is. Uh, D mister for front and back, uh, fan only. Uh, max cold setting, uh, air conditioning, auto, fan off. And then you can split between passenger and driver's side and that, with that dual button. And then uh, temperature control here. Um, if I just show you, if I turn it on for the time being, um, just turn the fan down so you can hear me. Uh, but you can have something called smart air, and that will just decide for you how to direct the flow of the vents, which you cannot control manually, by the way. Um, it's got to be controlled automatically via the screen. Um, you can also determine how you want to swing the uh, the vent. So. Focus is basically directly into your face. I'll do on this side so you can experience it. Focus on the face, see how it changes direction. And then avoid is it'll swing up so it doesn't uh, blow onto your face. Then you've got swing, which I believe this one will swing left and right, as you can see there. This one will uh, stay on your face. Uh, free is um, I kind of just all over the place, uh, just randomly swing any which way. It's kind of cool, and then you can just switch it off completely. So if you don't want any flow for your side, and that can be independent to the passenger side as well. Uh, you can also manually play with the uh, flow as well, so you can sort of drag that up and down like that. And same with the passenger side too. Then you've got fan settings as usual, and then you've got demister only, um, face or feet. And then you've got the ventilation uh, and heating settings here. Uh, rear windshield and side me mirror heating. I guess it doesn't get that cold in Sydney, I think. We'll have to look at it in winter. Seat heating, ventilation. Hasn't gotten that hot yet in Sydney either, but we will test it later on. Air purification. Um, let's just try ion. Yeah, something's happening. Something's blowing in. Again, I'll have to research that a bit more. Um, quick purification. I think it's a bit like by defense mode in the Tesla, where it'll just blow a lot of air for a short period of time. Uh, maybe someone let one go in the car, maybe, um, might be useful for that situation. And then back to some more AC settings, which we'll go through um, in the general vehicle settings. Okay, so back on the center screen again, there's some more controls down here. So if you want to go into screensaver mode, I'll press this one. Uh, then you get a clock face and quick controls for air conditioning. And anytime you want to come back to the main menu, just tap the screen, it'll come back. This one um, will show uh, in split screen mode. Um, and if you want to flick it back to full screen, you can do that. You can rotate the screen, of course. That is what we all love BYD for. 
that split screen mode in portrait and landscape. I guess the only reason why I would use portrait mode is if I was navigation, using navigation maybe, and if I wanted to see further ahead of me, then portrait mode is where it might be useful. But honestly, I've always kept it in um, landscape mode. Just, uh, I guess, false habit from driving Tesla for so long. Um, and then if you want to go back to the main screen, just press that home button. It'll go back to those three commonly used features as we've gone through already. And then say, for example, you're using Spotify, and then you want to go back to the last thing you were using, you just press this one, return, it'll go back to the last thing you were using prior to going to that current app. Okay, so let's have a look at um, shortcuts, and then one more thing before we do that, um, that bell icon brings you to the last notifications. Um, to access shortcuts, you just swipe down like this, and then from here you can control the volume for the media you're playing currently, the guidance of the navigation, and you can adjust the um, brightness of the pad like that, um, and also the instrument panel to the drive instrument panel, so there you go. It's nice to have that independent control. And then back to the shortcuts here, um, you've got um, two sort of areas here. You've got vehicle control, and oh, it does tend to go away after a while. Vehicle controls and shortcuts. Vehicle control will give you access to these um, shortcuts. So head-up display, settings, electrical parking brake, which is the brake, I guess. Parking sensors on and off. I don't know why you'd want that off, I guess, if you find the noise annoying. You can open the trunk that way. I'm not going to press the button because I'm in my garage right now. Uh, turn the AVAS on or off. Okay, so that's pedestrian warning sound. So it's currently uh, off by default, which is what I want. You can turn it on as well. Automatic high beams. Um, traffic sound recognition on or off, blind spot detection on and off, wireless charging for right side and left side. That's handy if you are, say, using Apple CarPlay at the moment, which requires plugged in. And um, then you can turn off the right side off or left side off and leave your phone plugged in and resting there, which is what I quite like, actually. Uh, door switch. I haven't quite worked out what door switch is, so if someone could tell me what that is, that'd be great. Uh, electronic stability control on or off, intelligent cruise control on or off, and then the new energy uh, shortcut there. Let me just press that for you. That will give you some settings for uh, uh, regenerative braking and range display mode, which we'll go through later on. So let's go back to that. Okay, back to shortcuts. Um, audio shortcuts. And then CPD is for um, child presence detection settings as well. Oh, and furthermore, the ones I've got on my shortcuts, so that when I scroll down from here, these are the actual shortcuts I get. Uh, driver attention warning, uh, so I can turn off emergency lane assist at the moment because uh, it's always on. You can't save that setting. Energy feedback, which is regenerative braking. I like to have it on high. Uh, vent heating for the seats. That's another shortcut. Interior lights on and off. I think you could probably get away with one button for both functions, to be honest with you. Um, I don't know why they have two. And then the drive recording is the dash cam function, which is new because I installed the dash cam yesterday. Okay, so let's go to the second shortcuts area. Um, then you've got on my settings, you've got my Wi-Fi, which is that one. Uh, my uh, iPhone connected by Bluetooth, uh, auto uh, day-night mode, and mute. You can press that to mute your audio. And then furthermore, you can um, add more from this side to this side, like uh, connected devices, auto rotate button, and screenshot the whole thing. Okay, so let's go back to uh, vehicle controls, which is this button down here. Just press that, and all the settings pop up here. And we'll go through the um, settings, and then we'll have a comment on how intuitive they are. Um, after going through them all. So, so you've got first up um, system settings and internet, pretty straightforward, connected via Wi-Fi, personal hotspot. This is interesting because you can use your car as a hotspot, but then it does not support data sharing. So yeah, I'm not sure what use that would be to be honest with you. So I don't bother having the personal hotspot on or off. You don't get much data anyway each month and I'll go through that very shortly. Um, actually, let's go through that now. So let's go through the main screen and I'll just show you the apps that you get with the car. So you get uh, the BYD Assistant um, app um, and you can go through the settings there. You can, like I said, turn it on and off to have um, the you know high BYD to wake up the voice assistant, which I don't like, so I'll turn that off. And then you can have the voice volume, uh, voice languages only in American English at the moment. And you've got voice version and disclaimer. So that's the version of the smart voice currently. And then you can authorize BYD voice assistant, which you have to, to use this function. Apparently it uses some data as well, which I'll go through. Uh, and then you've got all the different voice commands here, you, which you can try, which I've given you some examples for, which we might go through maybe uh, in another video, all the different voice um, settings. 
So yeah, some good suggestions there. Um, let's go back there. So next one is phone, pretty straightforward. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth and access your contacts and recent calls and all that. Uh, radio, also this is the media center so you can play music via your Bluetooth or SD card by USB. Um, you can watch videos like that as well and then that's the audio settings which we'll go through in the settings. Okay, so back on the apps, you've got uh, music, which is the same uh, audio control area. Ah, interesting, look, so I've got the audio playing here, and then because I've got the dynamic um, lights on, it's kind of dancing with the music. I've always wondered about that, so yeah, it didn't work with my Apple CarPlay, but it seems to be working with my phone, which is connected by Bluetooth, but not by Apple CarPlay. Interesting. Okay, so um, more apps, Spotify, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, pretty straightforward. Media Center, which is, yeah, again, it's like, it's like a combination of these three. So I reckon they, they could probably have combined this app, this app, this app together as the Media Center, uh, rather than having three apps. Uh, vehicle image is um, the cameras around the car. Uh, driving recorder is the dash cam. And then utility tools, this is interesting. So Farm Manager, this is, um, showing you there's storage for 56.5 gigabytes. I'm using 3.9 gigabytes. Uh, SD card, I've got a 256 gigabyte card in there at the moment for dash cam, and then nothing for USB. And then back to the utility tools, you can disable auto start for any apps that are running in the background. And then the most interesting one is um, data monitor. So this is how much usage I get with uh, my BYD seal. I get 500 megabytes per month, um, at the moment I've used 10.5 megabytes only, an average of 2 megabytes per day over the last week. Uh, and it says here that the remaining data will be reset by midnight on the last day of each calendar month. Good thing that it's early January, so I'll have the rest of the month to use that 500 megabytes. Um, and if you press data usage there, it'll break down the apps that are using um, the data. And at the moment, uh, nothing is using any data. But the four main apps I've got is BYD Assistant, Spotify Navigation, and ISA. I'm not sure what that is. Have to uh, look at that. If anyone knows what that is, let me know. Okay, and then the last page, albums for pictures, settings, which is that button there, basically. Um, smart charging, let's go through that one. So you can uh, set the start and end time of your charging. Uh, reservation charging is, you know, obviously the schedule charging. Just lost in translation, and then more settings there. Uh, notifications for um, appointment reminder for power off, appointment reminder for plugging in charger, and the disclaimer as well. So the smart charging function is only developed for the AC slow charging equipment distributed by BYD. Apparently owners should turn off the function when using non-BYD certified AC slow charging equipment. Interesting. Well. I will test that with my own uh, non-BYD charger and see whether it still works or not. Um, I guess that's a disclaimer there for them. So the intelligent charging function is set by applying the system time of the vehicle, so that's important obviously. Uh, disclaimers for the company will not uh, be liable for anything that happens, of course. Then you've got digital radio, which is something else. It's like the digital radio for your area, which is, I guess, accessed via internet rather than the radio waves. So that might contribute to your data usage. And finally, variety theme. You can change the color scheme of your uh, main screen like that. There's a few to choose from as well. And also what kind of wallpaper you want for the back. So six to choose from once again. Okay, so let's properly run through the vehicle controls now. So back to this button. Okay, so let's go through it again. We sort of partway went through internet, uh, Wi-Fi, personal hotspot, Bluetooth connected to my phone. Connected devices, that's me at the moment. Um, audio, yep, so you can change the audio for the whole car or just parts of the car, so driver, front passenger, rear. Surrounding, customize where you want it to go. So what is the difference between surrounding and whole vehicle? So I guess surrounding uses the speakers from there too. So maybe I'll leave it on surrounding and see whether it uh, makes any difference to audio quality, which is okay. It's um, the quality of the speakers is fair. Wouldn't say it's excellent. Uh, it it does the job. I don't think it's as good as the Tesla audio that I've experienced so far. Um, then you can choose the different type of uh, audio: so acoustic, dynamic, soft speech. Or you can customize the 
audio levels to your heart's content right there. Uh, volume adjuster with speed. So I guess the uh, audio may go up dynamically depending on how fast you're going. Uses their own algorithm to determine how much you want to mask out the road and ambient noise. Might uh, have a look at that when we drive on the freeway. And the different volume controls, which is part of that shortcut menu here that we looked at earlier. All right, so then the next one is display. So um, you can change the screensaver clock face that we looked at earlier. Uh, multimedia brightness linkage. Again, I'm not sure what that is. So let me, let me know in the comments if anyone knows what that is. Um, theme, light, dark, auto. I think I've changed it to auto for the time being. Had it on dark before, but it just was too dark uh, during the day. So I'll, co I'll compromise with auto. And then you can set your vehicle dashboard brightness regulation. That's the drive screen there. Okay, moving along. So software, you've got update software not available, so that's okay. Okay, so I might cover my IMEI. I've been told to do that previously. Uh, but that is the software system version at the moment. Then you can restore to factory settings or restore all to default. Okay, all the apps you've got installed on the car currently. There's a lot of them. Storage space, so 128 gigabytes of storage apparently, and available space 52.61 at the moment. Okay, security, security credentials, permissions. You can play with the permissions of each app like so, like that. Um, accessibility. Okay, nothing there. Disable auto start for any apps that are playing. Notifications for all the apps. You can play with that too. Uh, for time, automatic time sync, time zone that we're in currently, 24 hour, 12 hour mode. Language, default IME. It's an Android keyboard, okay. Uh, units, uh, yep, kilometers, miles, one for power, one for temperature, one for uh, air pressure. And then user agreement will pop up and all the different addresses for the different bases where BYD is in around the world. Don't see anything for Australia. This bit. Privacy policy, if you want to read through that. You can revoke consent if you want to do that. And memory playback, what's this? Resume playback from where left off, I see. So last time you played the audio, it'll remember it. Okay, so next is ADAS, which we've kind of gone through already in another video, so I will uh, probably go through this really quickly. So intelligent cruise control on or off. Okay, so driving assist, we've kind of gone through that in a previous video. So lane support system, which is the controversial part, which is the part that cannot be switched off between drives. So I have it on vibration currently. This is quite intrusive. Emergency lane keeping assist is potentially dangerous sometimes. I've had the car veered to almost oncoming traffic. So I try to keep this off every time I go for a new drive. A high beam assist I have on. Traffic sign recognition is just annoying. Um, I like seeing the speed signs in the drive screen like here. I don't like it when I'm being told I'm like one or two kilometers an hour over. So I generally would turn this off every time I drive, which unfortunately is not retained for the next drive at the moment, waiting for that software update. Driver attention warning. Um, I guess something is monitoring me. I'll have to find that camera somewhere. And then child presence detection. If someone is left in the seat when you lock the car, I guess it'll beep for you. Next is active safety. Uh, predictive collision warning. I have it on late usually for all the cars I drive. Uh, it's okay, I'll leave that one on. Leave these on. Blind spot assist, leave that on. You can customize it to um, electronic stability control off. No, I'll leave that for the time being. Parking sensors on. And the panoramic images will go back to your um, the cameras around your car. Okay, next is new energy. Um, got energy feedback intensity. That's the regen braking. I like to have it on high. And then range display mode is dynamic. So according to your current driving pattern, or you can have the rated uh, range, which is a bit higher than dynamic. Interesting that my dynamic is 285 remaining. I'll switch to standard, 293. So it gives me a bit more if I want. But I think dynamic is more realistic. Charge settings, um, kind of gone through that already. So we'll go back here. Uh, charging port anti-theft lock. So I guess it's good to have. If you are charging the car, you should lock the charge port as well so no one can take it off when you're charging. Uh, total mileage so far, I haven't charged since taking delivery. So 256 kilometers, 
cumulative average energy consumption of 16.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, a tad high, but um, haven't done much highway driving yet, so um, mainly urban mix. And I've been sitting in the car sometimes with the AC on, um, just explaining stuff on camera, so maybe that's contributing to the efficiency, but it should just be for driving anyway, so um, we'll see whether that changes over time. Driving time, average speed, you can reset all that data. There's my consumption graph, you can reset if you want. And then vehicle settings, um, smart chassis, you've got steering assist mode. If you want it to be more responsive, you can go to sport mode. I'm happy at the time being. Uh, brake assist, again, sport and comfort for more responsive brake. And then comfort parking. I think that is when the brakes are a bit less responsive. So it's a bit less harsh when you're braking, um, when you're trying to do a three point turn or reverse park, for example, or parallel parking. Okay, so lights is the next one, so ambient lighting, which is uh, changing the color of the interior lights. Nice feature to have, I guess. Um, brightness, and then you can just adjust it for the whole vehicle or front of the vehicle or rear of the vehicle independently. Uh, dynamic colors, uh, if you want all the colors to go off at random times, and then music rhythm is if it dances with the beat, which I think I might turn that off, I don't quite like that. Uh, you can adjust whether you want distinctive, sea stars, tropical, or colorful color scheme. Again, I might turn that off. Um, adjust headlights, so you can adjust how high you want the lights, depending on how much load you've got in the back. Uh, follow me home headlight and headlights before entering. That's how long you want the lights on when you are coming to the car or leaving the car and this intelligent welcome light, which yeah, it's been okay. I haven't noticed it being too annoying. Um, head up display information. So you can adjust how high you want uh, the head up display to show in front of you, depending on how tall you are, I guess. Even the angle of the um, head up display, you can tilt that as well and how bright you want it. You can have classic mode or snow mode so i guess if there's snow uh currently the display is white but obviously if you're driving in snow then the display turns a bit blue which is quite a handy feature to have um on the head-up display if you don't want to have the cruise control um information you can turn that off or on that's quite handy okay next one is external mirrors auto fold flip while reversing uh that's good for when you're backing up auto fold's good obviously if you're locking the car folds in good at shopping centers uh, seat greeting is if you need more room to get into the car, that's quite handy. Auto wipers for rain sensing. Some more settings for air conditioning. This fan speed reduction during phone calls. So auto air recirculation is when to avoid other cars exhausts from entering the cabin. When driving slowly or stop, the air circulation mode of the aircon will automatically switch to internal circulation mode, which is quite good. This is for the app, how long you want the aircon running. If you turn the air conditioning on while running the app, um, and I always have AC on comfort. I like to enjoy my AC. Automatic purification on. Seat adjustment, you can save two settings electronically, and that's the heating and ventilation settings we played with earlier. Uh, door and window settings, so trunk height open can be set electronically. Press and hold remote key to close the windows. You can press and hold to open the windows. Auto close windows after locking, that's quite good. Press and hold to lock and close windows. Press and hold to unlock and open the windows again. Auto close windows in the rain, that's quite good. Um, part of the rain sensing feature. Auto lock while driving and handle auto retraction. Yeah, that's how, how long you want the door handles to stay open for before they retract again. Um, five minutes is what I have. Right, remote unlock all doors whenever I open the door so that the whole family can get in. Uh, notification, reminders. I think we kind of went through that before. I think we touched on the vehicle noise earlier. So standard is the indicator noise like that. Brand is not my cup of tea. Back to standard. I might just put on the AVAS on here just for a second to show you guys what this means. So, uh, so AVAS on, which is the pedestrian warning sound. Okay. So that is the noise of the pedestrian warning sound. I would not want to have that with that. So that is even worse with the brand sound. So Kind of sounds like an ice cream truck is coming, so I will leave that off. Unless the day comes when I need to have this on by law. I'll just drive very slowly. 
back to standard. Okay, media volume decreases when navigating. Yep. Okay, and then now vehicle health. This was set by uh, my rep when I took delivery of the car. So he set on 90 days and there's a free service of three months, which I will of course run through when I have to go in for service um, or the first 5,000 kilometers. So a notification will come up. Uh, wiper in service mode. It's handy if you're washing the car. Turn off wiper washing before wiper maintenance. Okay, so let's turn off the wiper washing. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, so wipers go up to that position to wash your car with. Back down again. Okay, and then trailer mode. I'll leave that off. Vehicle information, car status, car is good. Okay, so that's pretty much the settings walkthrough for the BYD. Uh, I sort of talked about the bits that I found unintuitive and probably could have saved buttons um, with. And for other owners, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, for those buttons, I didn't know what they were used for. Now let's have a look at the drive cluster really quickly. So these are the buttons you use in the steering wheel. So you've got intelligent cruise control settings on and off and increase and decrease the speed. That's for loading all the cameras. This is for uh, rotating the screen. This is the follow distance when you are using cruise control. Horn in the middle and you've got the menus here, left and right, scroll up and down, uh, driving mode and then call and voice control. And correction, this button is for uh, audio mode. So if I press this, We'll switch between the different um, audio, all of them actually, even Spotify. So that's handy. And then this is volume control here to mute or increase the volume, decrease the volume. All right, let's have a look at some of the menus on the center screen. So to activate that, press this button here. Okay, so you've got uh, past 50 kilometers efficiency, cumulative efficiency, and the tire pressure, the driving tire average speed, and then you've got this one, which is the battery remaining, and then also whether the power is going to the motor or coming from the motor, whether it's powered or regenerating the battery. Okay, next one is a uh, timer. This is if you want to time how fast you're going. Uh, might do that one day for a zero to 100 kilometer test. Uh, status, vehicle's good. Uh, fan speed, it's getting a bit muggy in here, might put it to one. Uh, temperature control for the driver's side, I guess. Uh, you can change the different modes, so this is what classic looks like. Okay, and then this is what simple looks like, back to simple. Okay, so that is um, cruise control setting. And then back to yeah, these other menus there, cool. Might just quickly go through the key fob as well. So this is what you get. You actually get two of these and a key card. And on the key fob, you've got the lock, unlock button got the trunk open or boot open double tap that one and this is really good actually if you're sort of walking up to your car or very close to your car just hang on to this button for like three or four seconds um, and that'll actually turn the whole car on and sort of precondition the car um, ahead of time of course you can also use the app to do that as well and then on the back of the car key you can actually access the emergency key just by flicking the switch here uh, I can't do it with one hand so let me just get it out and then I'll show you so when you flick the black switch across, this falls away. And then hidden inside is an emergency key, which I will take out. Okay, so there it is. It just slips out like that from that secret compartment. And then if you have a stuck, um, you can always pull the door handle out like that. And hopefully you can see a little, uh, yeah, a little hole there. You can stick that key into right there. So that's really handy if your key fob battery is dead. You can put the mechanical key in there and then turn the key anti-clockwise to uh, open the door. And just note too that the uh, mechanical key uh, needs to be extended out in that position. That way you can uh, turn the key with more leverage. Oh, and if you're ever interested, the SIM card for the car is actually located uh, in the center console area here, right, just in the middle. So um, we just remove this rubber um, floor and you'll see there is a SIM um, bracket right there. So you can just use one of those um, SIM card removers to push that hole there and this will pop up and a SIM card will be revealed.